the kidney is the primary organ of the urinary system. Its main function is to filter blood and remove waste products from our body through the urine. This organ also helps in maintaining homeostasis and is responsible for producing important hormones. There are several ailments that can disrupt the normal functioning of this organ. One of these common problems is the condition called kidney stones or nephrolithiasis. Renal colic, which is associated with passing stones, is often described as one of the strongest pain experiences a person can ever have. Imagine the pain of having sharp, irregular stones in your kidney traveling down the ureter. Reports show that the prevalence of nephrolithiasis is increasing globally across gender, race, and age. In 2002, the global lifetime prevalence for kidney stones was reported to be approaching 10%. The increase in prevalence of this disease may be due to unhealthy dietary practices and the effects of global warming. Worse still, kidney stones often recur, with at least 50% of individuals experiencing another stone episode within 10 years of the first occurrence. Let us now look at how kidney stones develop. Stones begin forming with a supersaturation of substances such as calcium, oxalate, uric acid, etc. in the urinary tract. The first few molecules precipitate out of the urine and serve as nucleation sites and form crystals. These crystals get anchored in the urinary tract and attract more molecules onto them, making them further increase in size. If there is a lack of inhibitory substances in your system, the crystals will aggregate, then agglomerate, and you get a kidney stone. The most common types of kidney stones contain calcium, uric acid, struvite, and cysteine. This condition imposes a significant health burden for sufferers, making treatment critical. The preferred mode of management is stone dissolution. Most stones won't disappear entirely, but with medication, you can make them smaller so that they can be more easily passed and prevent future recurrence. As cited earlier, inhibitory substances can prevent the formation of kidney stones. One such substance is citrate. Citrate forms soluble complexes with calcium, directly inhibiting calcium from forming crystals. This substance also alkalinizes the pH of urine, which increases solubility of uric acid and cysteine, so these substances do not form crystals. Citrate also treats hypocitratoria, a condition which puts one at risk of kidney stones. Potassium citrate in an extended-release wax matrix tablet format has been found to reduce stone formation. In a randomized, double-blind clinical study with patients suffering from stone disease and hypocitratoria, it was found that subjects who were given potassium citrate had almost a 92% drop in rate of stone formation from 1.2 to 0.1. Based on a meta-analysis, it was also shown that taking potassium citrate lowers the recurrence of kidney stones. In fact, potassium citrate is part of the recommended treatment by the European Association of Urology and American Urological Association against urinary risk factors. The only format of potassium citrate approved by the US FDA for treatment of kidney stones is the extended release wax matrix tablet. This format of potassium citrate has been shown to mitigate hurtful gastrointestinal side effects associated with potassium citrate therapy. Furthermore, studies have shown that potassium citrate provided as slow release tablets three times a day produced the most constant level of urinary citrate at higher levels. Remember, potassium citrate use is helpful not just to those suffering from small stones. This substance can also aid those with bigger kidney stones and post-op patients seeking to prevent the future recurrence of kidney stones. Check out our other video for more on the potassium citrate extended release wax matrix tablets.